Well, there have been some reports uh, here in Alberta and certainly in other parts of the country that uh, avian influenza is uh, once again showing up in uh, some of the flocks of uh, migrating snow geese and uh, wanted to reach out to the expert. Provincial Wildlife Disease Specialist Margot Pivas joins us. And uh, Margot, I guess first off, can you confirm that there are active cases of uh, influenza in the uh, snow goose population that's flying through Alberta at this point? Oh, yes, Michael. Yep, yeah, for sure there is. Um, but I I'd put it in context that, that avian influenzas are in waterfowl every year. And the situation that's changed this year is the, uh, the H5N1 version that's coming in with the migratory uh, waterfowl this year seems to be causing mortality in some wild birds. And that is what we have not seen before, but it is definitely happening uh, all across the migratory routes this year. It, it's my understanding, Margo, that, that a form of uh, avian influenza stays within a population and uh, sort of it, it, it's always there. Is, is that accurate? Correct. Yeah, it's a naturally occurring virus in bird populations around the world. And do we know uh, in this particular case, did, the, uh, did this strain uh, that you were talking about, did that come from um, domesticated uh, uh, birds and then passed, you know, sort of got active within the wild, uh, the wild population? Do we know any of that yet? Probably not. It does really, it more likely relates to an H5N1 version that occurred in waterfowl in Europe and Asia a number of years ago uh, and has, has been perpetuating in those Eurasian uh, waterfowl populations. So probably spilled over onto uh, into the North American birds when they commingled in the Arctic or or fly down different sides of the Pacific sort of thing. So although it's a different H5N1 because as we as we all learned with uh, with COVID these viruses change constantly, and so the H5N1 that we're seeing in the spring migrating birds is a North American version of, of H5N1, but it's probably something that just resorted as the virus resorted in North American birds, it became what, what we see now this spring. And of course, as you're well aware, uh, it it is uh, sort of the, the the prime time right now where we have a lot of hunters out on the land base uh, trying to harvest some of these snow geese. Um, what, from a safety precaution perspective, should hunters be paying attention to? And I and I guess the other what part of that question, Margo, is what should the hunting dogs be um, either kept away from or how do they, is, is there a, a potential that they could pick this up? Um, certainly not as far as I'm aware that, that this is an avian influenza. So it's specialized for living in birds and bird, bird systems. Uh, and fortunately, it does have a low human health risk. It's not a zero risk because virtually nothing in life is zero risk, but uh, the H5N1s um, can, uh, uh, can potentially infect humans, but it's usually in situations where people are contacting many infected birds at once, uh, like in, in Europe and Asia where when they were working within the infected poultry barns, that's where the few human cases have come from. So as far as a hunter in the field handling, you know, even a small, a small number of birds, basic precautions, you can always wear gloves or wash, a, wash and clean, uh, clean up uh, effectively when you're done. Uh, or you know, if you want to put a plastic bag over your hand before you grab your your harvested bird, um, that would be one way of doing it. The risk is is low, but it's not zero. Whereas we would say for for the dogs, probably, although I should probably look that up um, to make sure that there isn't an odd canine case somewhere. But basically, these are avian influences that do best in birds. 
And as far as, uh, I mean, these hunters are taking these geese on the wing. So um, again, I, I, I'm, I'm speculating, but I'm, I'm thinking if a, if a goose is, is able to fly on its own, looks like it's a normal thing, they would be fine to eat. Oh, they're all fine to eat. Yes. Okay. Um, and... I would, Michael, if I could, I'm just going to follow up because there was another thought that went through my mind when you posed that question initially. That that uh, although the, the the risk to the hunter is low, what we would uh, reinforce with hunters that if they are hunting waterfowl this year, um, that they really need to be staying away from poultry because that's where the risk really takes off that uh, domestic chickens, geese, ducks, turkeys are all, this virus is deadly when it gets into those populations. So if you are uh, hunting um, waterfowl, then you should be doing a thorough cleaning and disinfecting. And that includes like your boots, your equipment, even, even your vehicle, the uh, tractor tire, or, um, uh, truck tires sort of thing before you go anywhere near a poultry operation. Yeah, that's uh, that's a great point, obviously, and and you know a lot of these hunters gain access uh, through um, landowners uh, that may be operating these types of operations. So they need to be absolutely aware that they are um, really paying attention to where they are and what they're touching, that type of thing. Um, Margot, I guess uh, the final thought is, I mean, we, we look at these snow geese populations, um, especially the, 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 as they head up into the Arctic and number into the tens of millions and not to be, not to be flippant about it, but could, you know, is, is this a good thing in the long term to have this kind of, a, of a influenza go through to help curb some of that population growth as they, they hit the, the high Arctic? Well, I, I certainly appreciate the question, and, and I and I also appreciate the sensitivity around this. It sounds pretty callous um, to take that approach, but in the bigger picture, um, we certainly have high snow goose populations across the board, and maybe this is Mother Nature's way of of starting to trim those populations uh, a little bit so that they're not creating havoc in the Arctic habitat uh, areas where where they are really causing a lot of damage in some of those breeding areas. And that um, maybe this virus will, will take out, it's, what we're seeing at least in Alberta is what we would call light mortality. So, uh, you know, a field you may have uh, hundreds of, of uh, snow geese that light in a field and uh, when they rise up, there's maybe eight or 10 that didn't because they've died of, of this avian influenza. And that's not going to threaten the snow goose population overall, but it certainly might start to trim it back a little bit and put it into better balance with the rest of the ecosystem up in the north. Of course, the thing that we don't know and can't predict until we see it happen one way or the other is, whether this new version of avian influenza, what effect might it have on the actual breeding grounds once these birds, once the snow geese get into the Arctic and fairly concentrated, you know, lots of stress associated with um, uh, raising young and that sort of thing, will the avian influenza continue, mortality continue up there or will it diminish? And we really have no way of, of predicting one way or the other. I guess you kind of just answered my final question, and that was, do we have a sense of, of sort of the cycle of something like this? Um, would it, uh, are we looking at sort of one season where it's really active and then peters away maybe towards uh, next fall? Uh, any, any sense of the longevity of the virus? Don't know for sure. Certainly when viruses have these pathogenic forms, they tend to have a fairly short-term longevity, and then the virus resorts again and comes out as, as something less pathogenic next time, but, but we really don't know for sure. All right, Margo, we'll leave it there. Uh, thank you so much for your time. It's always great chatting with you and uh, for some great uh, information to pass along to all those folks out there that might be hunting this, uh, this spring. Well, it's always good to share good information with people that are listening.